the Flash. While Marvel made the concept of multiverse the focal point of its current phase, its primary rival, DC, was yet to assemble a movie around this idea, which is interesting considering that the DC universe consists of gazillion different timelines with multiple Batmans and Jokers running around in unrelated movies. The Flash kind of addresses this issue and in a way closes the chapter for DC, since James Gunn is currently in charge of the DC studios and he is resetting the whole thing. This is one of the reasons why The Flash might get slightly overlooked, because the reboot is imminent. This is also why it is important for the superhero movies subgenre. I know there is a quite a bit of criticism of The Flash in both the mainstream media, you know, the media which thinks that Wakanda Forever is a good film, and in alternative media, uh, which likes to demolish and dismantle everything because the audience loves trash talk. But The Flash is actually a decent movie. I mean, a decent superhero movie, which is kind of surprising. It is probably better than everything DC released since The Batman with uh, Robert Pattinson. Arguably, it is even more entertaining than The Batman. Which is... Okay, it is not really in the DC Extended Universe. But, uh, well, The Flash is probably more interesting than Justice League or something. And it is much better than everything Marvel released in the past few years. Maybe with the exception of the recent Guardians of the Galaxy. But it is not really fair to compare The Flash and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, which are hands down the best superhero movies of 2023 so far. It is not fair mostly because Guardians and uh, James Gunn personally play dirty tricks on the audience. I mean, yeah, that's adorable and stuff, but you have this feeling of getting tricked. I can imagine James Gunn just sitting there and calculating how he can create a tearjerker and uh, manipulate people's emotions. Like he's some sort of a corporate Lars von Trier and Guardians of the Galaxy is his dancer in the dark. So yeah, The Flash is a nice movie. It is quite well thought for this genre, and it tackles the multiverse issue quite gracefully. Better than most movies. Which includes this glorified nonsense of everything everywhere all at once. Yes, The Flash is a better movie than everything everywhere all at once. I mean it. It is smarter. The Flash engages in a discussion of predetermination and your reconciliation with fate which is a philosophical question discussed over and over again since the times of classical antiquity. And everything everywhere is a mess which tells you to be kind, whatever it means, and be supportive of uh, gay people. In this battle of philosophical midgets, the victory clearly goes to the flesh, because the ideas postulated there at least resemble actual philosophy. The plot of the flesh goes like this. Barry Allen, the Flash, figures out that if he can run really fast, he unlocks the possibility of traveling back in time. How exactly does it work? Uh, nobody knows, it is just a plot device. Basically, it is like this episode from the Superman movie from uh, 1978, when Christopher Reeve starts flying around the Earth in circles and rewinds time through some magical magic. So, the Flash goes back in time to save his mother, even though he was warned not to try anything like that. And he kind of uh, ends up in a parallel universe as a result. This is where the screenwriters come up with a brilliant idea that tries to marry the concept of multiverse with the concept of determinism. You can change the past and create a new timeline, but some key events are predetermined. They can't be changed no matter what you can just cope with the consequences. This is good. And I was very surprised by the fact that the screenwriter for The Flash is Christina Hudson, who previously wrote the script for Birds of Prey, which is a seriously bad movie. So yeah, Barry Allen goes back in time, alters the course of the events, meets a different version of himself, and then we get a huge amount of fan service. Because he apparently ends up in the timeline of Tim Burton's Batman, where he meets Michael Keaton. And then you have more of that, including a cameo appearance through deepfake, I guess. A cameo appearance of Nicolas Cage as uh, Superman. 
Because, well, Nicolas Cage was supposed to play the character in Burton's Superman Leaves, but the project was abandoned. And there's more of that, which is something that people actually want, and the producers know that. So you see all sorts of references, cameos, etc. You see how the crew recreates sets from Burton's Batman. You see Burton's Batmobile. You see Christopher Reeve. You learn that Superman landed in Soviet Union instead of the United States, which might be a partial reference to Superman Red Sun comic book miniseries. Partial, because we don't get a Soviet Superman. And actually, we get the version of Supergirl. So yeah, lots of stuff is going on, and most of the time, it is quite pleasant and surprisingly coherent. Obviously, Michael Keaton is in the center of all this fanservice game. And it is a smart decision in its own way, because it helps to draw attention from Ezra Miller, who, as we all know, is an absolutely toxic asset for DC. I mean, I know people who just refuse to watch The Flash regardless of its quality, simply because Ezra Miller is there. Everybody knows that he, sorry, they, is a total train wreck and nobody understands why he, sorry, they, wasn't cancelled already. Some people got cancelled simply because of dubious allegations or because they claimed they support the wrong political party or they think that there are only 25 genders instead of 78. But this guy, well, they didn't cancel the flash. They didn't recast the guy. He, sorry, they, is still there. Why is this happening? Usually at this point, I'm supposed to say something like, let me know in the comments. Please uh, don't let me know in the comments. Just don't. Uh, we can discuss something else. Like, literally anything. So what have we learned from The Flash? The screenwriter of Birds of Prey is actually competent. You can effectively squeeze determinism into a movie about multiverse. Multiverse itself is like noodles. It is almost impossible to cancel a guy if his pronoun is they, them, or it. Batman and Robin has a sequel. In the end, The Flash is a surprisingly solid superhero movie. It is fun to watch, even with Ezra Miller on screen. It has a coherent and quite inventive script where multiverse meets Back to the Future. It even has some sort of a positive message about your existence in the deterministic or partially deterministic world. It is not a great movie, but still better than everything everywhere all at once, and far more entertaining. 